Before I get into the accounting standards, let me just touch upon something in terms of, this is a famous interesting topic which always we used to have, whether accounting should be on a rule based setup or on a substance based which is principle based. The principle based is something where the accounting standards defines broadly what should be the principle, how it has to be applied and stop with that. It does not go beyond that. As far as rule based is concerned, it just takes you to each and every point literally it narrows down the application. The, there are advantages and disadvantages. If you take the IFRS, the International Financial Reporting Standards, generally everybody knows these are all principle based standards. They do not get into nitty gritty. They just deal with accounting matters at a principle level. But when you compare it with US GAAP, which, which is pretty much rule based, that means they want to kind of make sure each and everything is appropriately identified and regulated. The advantage of rule based is you, you will be in a position to ensure consistency and standardization. But when it comes to principle based, the advantage is like you are not making it so rigid, you know, because in this world you can't visualize everything. There could be various scenarios, uh, there, there could be various uh, circumstances which would force a person to apply a particular standard in a different level. So unless these things are recognized by law, it is going to be very difficult. Now, as far as the Indian setup is concerned, as all of you are aware, we are still dealing with only Indian accounting standards and the NDAS is yet to be notified. So NDAS is supposed to actually come in, we do not know when that will come up. Once if that comes up, that is going to be on par with the international financial reporting standard to a substantial extent. Now, as far as accounting standards are concerned, this new body which everybody talked about NFRA, this body has been vested with the powers to promulgate accounting standards and the auditing standards. What is this NFRA? This NFRA as of now if you have to look at it, the current NACAS which is actually playing the role of an advisory role to the central government in terms of prescribing the accounting standards to be followed to the government, that body has been effectively moved into a different league and that has been given a color of an NFRA. So I would look at NFRA into an arm of let us say the old NACAS taking a new avatar but it has got different different powers and different roles to play which I will discuss later on but as far as NFRA is concerned that is going to be the body which is going to give accounting standards. The act when it talks about accounting standard and the auditing standards what it says is as far as auditing standards are concerned, for the first time the companies that gives legal recognition to the auditing standards. I mean just to kind of give you an example, as an auditor, when the auditor comes and then does the physical verification of an inventory or he has to send confirmation to the lawyers for the purpose of obtaining legal confirmation, these are all procedural matters. Till now this is something which the auditor has to deal with it. But for the first time the law recognizes that auditing standards are also equally important similar to accounting standard and that is why legal recognition has been given for auditing standards. So literally if there is a violation then it becomes a violation of the law. If there is a non-compliance with respect to auditing standard then that becomes a legal non-compliance. So NFRA for the time being which is supposed to notify accounting standards and auditing standards, what it says is till such time the auditing standards are notified by NFRA, the auditing standards of ICAI would be applicable and that is what everybody needs to follow. But as regards accounting standards, that provision is not there. So effectively then the accounting standards need to be necessarily notified by NFRA. There are some significant changes which are coming up because of uh, the way in which the act deals with some of this. Whilst the accounting standards as of now flows from let us say the, the company's accounting rules uh, which has its own origin in 1956. Now we are all left with a sort of a uh, serious complication now where the section which has been talking about accounting standard notification by NFRA that has been notified and that is part of the 98 section which is introduced by the government. But unfortunately the accounting standards as such has not come in. To take care of this, the Ministry of Corporate Affairs has come up with a circular which says till such time the accounting standards are notified, you follow the old standards. That is why actually we are all struck with the situation where we are talking about the old accounting standard which is 
actually covered through the Companies Act 1956 and that's what we are referring to as accounting standards applicable for the Companies Act under 2013. There are some inconsistencies or probably I would say issues that one has to deal with very, very carefully even as part of this accounting standard. Now, what we understand is Ministry of Corporate Affairs has been working with the institute in terms of what are all these inconsistencies and how this can be addressed. Because now, while the law says accounting standards uh, will be notified by NFRA, but the law also talks about various aspects which, which need to be complied with. So, obviously what happens is you will be left with a position where law says one thing, accounting, says, accounting standards says something else. I will give you a classic example, we will just run through some of the significant ones. You take the case of proposed dividend. Proposed dividend as of now, that according to the new Companies Act, it has to be disclosed as a note in the financial statement. It is not an item to be adjusted in the financial statement, that is in the PNL as an appropriation it would not come. Till such time it is declared, this is in line with the international practice. So that is what is stated clearly in the Act. But now if you take your accounting standard 4, that says the amount of proposed dividend needs to be adjusted and that needs to be disclosed in the financial statement. So what do you do now? So obviously, as far as AS4 is concerned, you have to necessarily continue adjusting proposed dividend. But the new Companies Act talks about showing it as a note to the financial statement. So there is a difference. Now similarly, when it uh, comes to depreciation, there are quite a lot of changes that occurred especially in this area of depreciation. Whilst the intention of the act is to deal with governance aspects and procedural aspects and leave the accounting to the professional bodies, but the act has also gone one step further and touched upon some of the aspects specifically to take care of the intention of the regulators. I will give you an example. As far as depreciation is concerned, now the act for the first time it says it has to be provided on based on the useful life not based on the rates so all of us know schedule 14 which used to talk about the depreciation rates that's no longer applicable now there is an act and that says this is going to be the useful life for an asset so the depreciation for an asset is going to be provided based on the useful life as determined by the act which is the company act 2013 and it goes one step further the act itself necessitates companies to get into componentization. That means you have a large asset and there is a sub asset. So, give you an example. Let us say there is a big aeroplane, right? In the aeroplane, there are engines, there are various other parts. But what is important is still now, if you look at it, when you say aeroplane needs to be depreciated, you provide depreciation for the entire aeroplane. But now, one has to understand the useful life of the engine is different from the useful life of the other structure on the body of the aeroplane. So to that extent, depreciation needs to be provided separately. That means you componentize the asset and identify what is the applicable useful life for the component and then depreciate it. This concept has been recognized by the Companies Act and this is something which is very, very significant. Companies need to get ready for this particular componentization of the asset and uh, this has to be done. Now, if you look at it from the existing accounting standard point of view, componentization is not mandatory. But this has to be done because of the provisions in the company side. So, what needs to be done is, now there is an inconsistency between the act and the accounting standard. These inconsist inconsistencies need to be addressed. Similarly, when, when it comes to uh, the act, now there is no more a question of um, assets costing less than 5000 to be provided 100%. That concept goes. That is not there because everything is linked to useful asset because this used to be a big pain at the time of accounts and audit where you will see assets costing less than 5000 you have to identify and provide 100 percent that is not there. So I mean if, if you really look at it act has gone one step further and at, at one end it has liberalized lot of procedural things at a lower level but it also addresses various things from a technical viewpoint. When it prescribes the useful life, there is also another important thing that needs to be taken care of. It prescribes useful life for certain industries. It says based on the study done, they have identified the list of various industries and they said this would be the expected useful life for these industries. But option has been given in case if you want to follow a different useful life, 
only with respect to these industries you can provided you explain why you believe a different useful light needs to be applied but this option is not applicable for other industries some of these things are very very critical minute points that could have a significant impact for you when you deal with accounts the this table just kind of gives you an overall idea about the impact of depreciation there is going to be a significant impact arising out of depreciation and uh, as far as transactional provisions are concerned what it says is you will be as and when this becomes applicable you will take the opening wdv rework it and amortize it over the balance useful life that means whatever is the wdv that should have been uh, arrived at that will get amortized over the balance useful life as determined by this new formula and if the asset itself doesn't exist for whatever may be the reason then that will be adjusted against opening general reserve as a transitional provision this is going to have a significant impact similarly in terms of the residual value the residual value generally not more than 5% of the original cost of the asset is stated in the act so now literally there is a monetary threshold that has been fixed by the act in terms of what should be the residual value because accounting standards normally they don't get into the uh, monetary thresholds so now all these things have to be dealt with in the accounting standard there are significant implications as i was just mentioning from a depreciation point of view this is going to have an impact on your distributable dividend managerial remuneration and the componentization obviously would involve significant judgments this is not a case of no everything is part and parcel of the same asset effort is required in terms of individually identifying what are all the significant separatable components that need to be depreciated at a different rates so this has to be done and probably you may have to change your systems because as of now maybe whatever be the accounting system that you follow for calculating depreciation for large companies so just imagine capturing an asset itself is difficult for large entities now you need to split components within the asset and depreciate at different rates and just imagine what is going to happen when you are going to sell the asset right it it's going to be a real nightmare uh, but all of us need to rise to the occasion i'll also touch upon some of the concepts relating to the companies act which in a way is important for accounting one of the significant thing is financial year as in the case of the income tax income tax clearly says financial year is april to march but companies act so far there is no such rigid mandate and you can follow any year as long as you comply with the basic requirements but for the first time the companies act says you have to necessarily follow april to march as the financial year there are only few exceptions which goes with the permission of the company law tribunal and all this so for all practical purposes you can presume that you have to fall in line with april to march year and this is very very critical for multinational companies having their subsidiaries in india you have to make sure if you are following Uh, a different accounting year then unless you get into the qualification criteria for getting exemption and get the approval from the appropriate authority you won't be in a position to use your parents accounting period as your indian statutory accounting year so this is going to be very significant the next important concept as far as accounting is concerned is consolidation as of now as you know in india consolidation is applicable only for listed companies there is an accounting standard 21 which talks about what needs to be done and to whom it is applicable for listed companies because of sebi requirement this is applicable but for the first time the act says consolidation is applicable for all entities whether listed unlisted doesn't matter it's applicable for all entities as long as you have a subsidiary the word subsidiary is also defined in a peculiar manner to include associates and joint venture so then that means even unlisted entities which are having a subsidiary i mean subsidiary meaning including associates and joint venture you need to prepare consolidated financial statements in addition to stand alone financial statements so the entire work that you are doing is going to get doubled and this is going to be a significant increase in the work and wherever you have uh, i mean unlisted entities who have not prepared consolidated financial statements you have to get ready for this so now if you look at this particular standard uh, there is one concept which is clearly emerging the concept is the sub i have told you subsidiary includes associates and joint venture but normally subsidiary doesn't include associates and joint venture 
So the act effectively is bringing in a concept that there could be different definitions for different things. So this is going to be a big issue which is going to impact and to taking cue from what you said. Now the regulators have to decide whether they are going to amend the accounting standard also which deals with subsidiary, control, significant influence, associate in line with the Companies Act or they are going to leave the Companies Act as it is which meets a particular purpose, particular requirement and leave the accounting standard for the purpose of dealing with accounting. This is going to be a big issue and uh, there are challenges. Which